Nope. Nope, nope. Where are you going? Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. And this week, I realized we haven't done a leopard gecko video in a little while, so we're doing a leopard gecko video. I did a video similar to this one for your new bearded dragon first week and you guys really, really liked that video. So I decided to do one for leopard geckos as well. Basically in this video, we're just gonna be going over things that you should prepare for when you get your leopard gecko, things that you should do, things you shouldn't do, knowledge that you should have going into this, just everything that you need to know in your very first week of bringing home your leopard gecko. Since this is a gecko related video, this week's sponsor is iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. First things first, if in any way it is at all possible, set everything up first. This is going to help you out. It's going to make it a lot less stressful bringing home this brand new animal if you know everything in that tank is good to go. And it's also going to make your animal feel a lot less stressed when you are not reaching into that tank nonstop the entire time. It just makes everyone's life a lot easier. Having that tank set up first before you get your leopard gecko means that you know that the temperatures are correct, that the lighting is correct, that they have all the hides, that the layout is good, that you are happy with the layout because you are going to be looking at it all the time and make sure that everything is good to go before that animal goes into that tank which just helps everyone out if you do need it I do have a how to set up a leopard gecko tank right here that I will leave and I have multiple videos of me setting up my leopard geckos tanks on the channel as well so if you need those those are there for you next let's talk about feeding these animals in the first week. The most important thing here is making sure that you have food for that animal. Sometimes if you are bringing in an animal and you've set up an entire tank and you have everything good to go, you may forget that this animal also needs live insects, which most of the time is fine. Most people have chain pet stores near them that they could just run to and get bugs for their animal. But I know my local PetSmart and Petco have been running out of insects very quickly. And with temperatures where I live, getting insects chipped to me has been an issue. So it's been a struggle getting bugs lately so make sure that you have feeders ready to go for your animal when you get them if you are getting your reptile from a reptile show that is perfect because they always have feeder tables set up so you can just get them on your way out just make sure you have bugs for that animal also make sure to understand the needs of feeding that animal so if you are getting a baby you are going to feed that leopard gecko baby every single day depending on the type of bugs you're gonna feed them between five and ten insects make sure that the insects are small enough that it fits between the spaces between their eyes you're not feeding a tiny baby leopard gecko large crickets because they cannot properly digest that if you have brought home a juvenile or adult the feeding schedule changes a little bit generally as they get older you're going to pull that feeding schedule back about every other day you also want to make sure that you have calcium powder or vitamin powder to dust those insects with you are going to need to dust your leopard geckos food at every feeding so make sure that you have that on hand that's another thing that is super easy to forget and make sure you are gut loading those bugs you can buy already gut loaded insects at the store sometimes at reptile shows usually it's the timberline brand. I think that's what it's called. Vita bugs. Those are already gut loaded. However, gut loading doesn't last forever. You still are going to need to put those bugs into a bigger container and put fresh vegetables or pre-made feeder diets, something like that into that tank. So that way they can keep up those nutritional levels for your leopard gecko. Your leopard gecko may not eat the first few days and that is perfectly okay. They potentially are very stressed out from the move and from all of the sights and scents and feels and everything around them is brand new. They have usually just traveled in a car or even by UPS, FedEx. They've been traveling, they've been jostled around. They are usually not the happiest and they are pretty stressed out. So if they don't eat those first few days, that is perfectly okay, it's perfectly normal. If they are not stressed out, you get them in, they are eating perfectly okay, they seem like they are good to go, they are using the bathroom regularly, everything is good. You can actually start hand feeding them towards the end of that first week of having them just to kind of start that bonding process. Food is always a fantastic way to bond with your leopard gecko. 
Along those same sort of lines, generally when you bring a leopard gecko home, you want to skip handling them for that first week. This also includes not messing around in their tank too much. I mean, you can clean up waste, things like that, but as far as moving things around, adding things, taking things out, you wanna skip doing all that for at least the first week because that is their adjustment period. They are trying to adjust, they're trying to settle in, and they're just trying to get a grasp of their surroundings. They are going to have a very hard time I'm getting a grasp of the surroundings if you're constantly adding things and taking things out. So we want to just try to avoid that and try to avoid handling. Now, every single time I say this, there is always someone in the comment section saying how fantastic their leopard gecko or bearded dragon or whatever was and how they didn't get stressed out for the first few days, how they were absolute angels right out of the gate. And if that's the case, awesome. Yeah, if you get your leopard gecko home and they are eating, they are exploring, they're happy, they are coming out to you, you. They are crawling into your hand. Some people tell me that theirs do when they first get them home. If they're doing things like that, then that's awesome. You probably don't need to give them that adjustment period because they're just more outgoing leopard geckos than others. All leopard geckos are different. They all have different personalities. You may get one that takes two weeks to settle in. You may get one like Winter that literally did not let me handle her for the first year. So just pay attention to them. Pay attention to that body language. I have a body language video of leopard geckos right here if you need that too. Just pay attention to all those things. Do what works best for your leopard gecko. Just know though that baby leopard geckos in general tend to be super skittish, especially if you are getting tiny little babies and that a lot of times doesn't really go away at all until they're older. So this might be a situation where you just need to be patient. A lot of times with baby leopard geckos, they will hide a lot, even to the point of only coming out at nighttime when everyone else is asleep, when the house has calmed down, that's when they'll come out to eat and use the bathroom and explore and all that stuff. As they get older, other stress behaviors that leopard geckos may have other than not eating. It's also going to be things like glass surfing. So if you bring home an adult leopard gecko and you see that they are glass surfing, something's not right. For some reason they are stressed out and you may need to figure out what's going on there. Sometimes it could be things like temperature issues. So that's why it's super important to have your tank set up first so you can make sure to check the temperature of your heat pad or your basking light, your deep heat projector, whatever it is that you're using. Make sure that those temperatures are all good to go before you get your animal. But yeah, that about covers the normal first week stress behaviors. Parasite testing. This is not 100% necessary. It's something that I like to do when I first bring an animal home. It is just what it sounds like. You are going to collect a fecal sample from your animal, take it into a vet, and have them test it for parasites. Super cool thing about this is a lot of vets, even if they are not reptile specialists, will still do parasite tests for reptiles because it's super fast and easy thing that they do. They are just looking at the poop and making sure that there's no bugs in it. Not 100% necessary, but it is something that I like to do because when you bring that animal home, like we have just talked about, there's a giant possibility that they're not going to want to eat, that they're going to be super skittish, that they're going to be hiding a lot. And all of those things are also signs of parasites. If you are getting them from a reputable breeder, usually you don't have to worry about parasites because they are keeping those tanks clean. However, if you are not getting them from a reputable breeder, then they could get parasites. Understanding shedding. This is something that you definitely need to understand when you very first get your leopard gecko. Because they eat their shed, especially if you have really light colored leopard geckos, you may not notice that they're shedding. And then that adds that whole worry of why are they not eating? Because leopard geckos usually won't eat when they're shedding. Why are they not eating? Is my leopard gecko not growing? growing, why are they not shedding? And all that can quickly be remedied by just understanding how they shed and they eat the shed. It is also super, super important that when you set that tank up, when you get them, you provide them with a shed box, a moist hide of some sort. I like to buy the Zoomed, Zilla, whatever brand they are these ones. I like to buy these just because they look fancy. They look very naturalistic and I love naturalistic looks. But you can also just go to the Dollar Tree and grab a Tupperware and cut a hole out of it and throw some wet sphagnum moss in it or wet paper towels. If you're using paper towels, make sure to keep a check on them. Make sure that they're not getting mildewy or moldy. If a leopard gecko doesn't have a wet hide, they sometimes can have a little bit of a difficult time shedding because they do like their tanks being so dry. If your leopard gecko has a hard time shedding, this 
this could cause damage to them. Their toes are very tiny and very spindly. And if that shed is having a hard time coming off, that shed can get wrapped around those toes, cut off circulation, and that's when you see leopard geckos running around that are missing a whole bunch of toes. One of the most important things you can have in your leopard gecko tank is that moist hide. And the last thing that you should know in your leopard gecko's first week home with you is that it's gonna be okay. Getting new reptiles is stressful. And if you have never kept reptiles before in your life, it is so stressful. I have quite a few reptiles and I still get stressed out anytime I get any kind of new animal. You want to watch them the whole time. You want to peek in at them every 20 minutes. And the moment that something goes the tiniest bit wrong, you feel like you've done something wrong or you feel like the animal's sick and something bad is happening. This is completely normal. I wish someone had told me this when I very first got into reptiles because I was a nervous wreck. It's completely normal to be stressed out when you get your leopard gecko. If something happens, if your leopard gecko isn't eating and you feel like it's been way too long since they've eaten or your leopard gecko isn't pooping and you feel like it's been way too long or you you are scared that you didn't set the tank up correctly, Google is sometimes your friend. Maybe let's avoid looking up things like my leopard gecko isn't eating, are they dying? Because that's when you're gonna get a bunch of terrible results. But Googling new leopard gecko not eating or new leopard gecko not going to the bathroom is going to help you out a lot and it's going to make you feel better as long as again you're not looking for terrible things that are happening another giant thing if you get your leopard gecko home in that first week and you are again super stressed out you're super worried you just know something is wrong with your leopard gecko please take them to the vet a reptile specialist will also usually go over your husbandry for your leopard gecko as well. So they not only will weigh your leopard gecko and test for any kind of parasites, inspect them to check for any kind of external parasites. They will also go over your husbandry with you to make sure that you have set up your leopard gecko's tank correctly. Yes, vets cost money, but that is gonna make you feel so much better knowing that you are doing everything correctly. And that's it. That is all I have for your leopard gecko's first week home. Just set everything up and relax and let your leopard gecko explore their new forever home. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is such a wonderful company whose products I have used for years now. They are my favorite and they're so wonderful to work with. Their products are awesome. They are super high quality and they allow you to upcycle old tanks that you have laying around and make beautiful front opening tanks. I love their conversion kits and the tanks that I have by them. I love those. I just love this company and that's why I continue to shout them out and have them as a sponsor on these videos because I genuinely love their products. They make having things like front opening tanks or your crested gecko more affordable and accessible for everyone. Make sure if you do order an awesome product like a conversion kit from this awesome company, you put Elzer Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box so that way they know you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is for Skullcandy1994 for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out is for IndieRail. Indie Real, I'm so sorry, for commenting on last week's video. Thank you both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. This week, hopefully we have better audio quality. <laughs> I decided to change up the scenery for you guys a little bit. So if you're tired of looking at a fake brick wall, you're welcome. I do have a setup guide for absolute salt lizard. <laughs> She's just giving me a death stare. They babies also that chance of parasites goes up and it could then be and then and um and